So as you can see, I've just quickly created this hinge object off camera because it's just basically a cylinder with the top and bottom slightly beveled in. I've also created the bit that sits on top of the hinge. And if I just get rid of that, you can see that it's basically the same cylinder. I've just cut it in half and then extended this edge back. I've then extruded it up and scaled down the top and the entire thing will sit slightly inside of the top and bottom sections. So if I quickly turn that into subdivision surface, do the same for that, select all of these guys, you can see that the hinge sits nicely in there like that. Next, we're going to create this object on the front. And as you can see, I've already gone ahead and created a simple object. Now, this is just a box with these two extra edges cut. And I just moved the verts to match the reference images in both the top, the left, and the front views. So now we're going to add in this part on the back, which will kind of accommodate uh, this middle section that we created here. So I'm going to hide that temporarily, come back to our front view. And I'm going to add in a cut there add in another one there, so just on these top corners. Then I'm going to select this new edge, and I'm going to loop slice just around a little bit to match the very top of this hole. And with that done, we can grab this edge and scale that up on the Y, and this will just match our background a little bit. And then in perspective mode, I'm going to delete that polygon, and I'm going to bring back this middle section body just to make sure that everything fits nicely together, and it looks like it does. We could probably afford to bring this one down just a touch. Cool. Now with that done, I'm going to hide our middle section body again. And we now need to create this circular hole here. And to do that, it's very simple. We've done the technique before. I'm going to create a circle. And in fact, I've done this in this other layer already. You can see I've created this circle here, which is a 12-sided cylinder. I've then cut it in half, and I'm going to delete this back face. We can then extend this past the end of this block, go into perspective mode and extrude this all the way through this new grip that we've created. Now with it extruded, we want to turn off everything except for these two layers, which we have done. I'm then going to select the object we want to cut and have our cutting object in the background. And this is because we're going to go use the mesh edit solid drill function. And what this does is basically stencil, if we use the stencil mode, the edges of this background shape onto this foreground shape. So I'm going to click OK. And you can see if I hide this mesh, we've now got that cutout shape on this surface. So now it's just a case of going in and joining up the edges so that we get some nice quads in this area. So as you can see, I've added in these extra edges to make sure everything is quads. And now we need to basically bevel these faces slightly into the body of this model. So first of all, I'm going to delete these faces here. Then I'm going to grab these guys and I'm going to hit B for bevel and right click. Then I'm going to activate the move tool and move these back on the Z axis. And I'm going to move it until this line is roughly in position about there. And with that done, we need to delete both of these inside faces, and then we can use our weld tool to weld these points together. The next thing we need to do is create the border that runs around the entire object. So I'm going to go to perspective mode and select all of these front faces, and these guys down the side as well. Then back in the front view, I'm going to hit B for bevel and inset them ever so slightly, like that. And when you're happy, you can go back to perspective mode. I'm going to shift click and then I'm going to move them in ever so slightly just to uh, create a little bit of a dip in there. And then I'm going to hit shift click one more time and just inset them a tiny little bit more. Now with that done, it's just a case of going in and adding some support edges to make sure this ob object stays exactly as we want it in subdivision surface mode. And when you're done, you should end up with an object that looks a little bit like this. Now, adding in the edges was no different from doing it in any other part of the model. But there are two areas that I want to take a quick look at. I've added in this edge running all the way around the inset here, uh, just to make sure that this keeps a nice kind of creased edge when we go to subdivision surface mode. And at the top and bottom here, I've done the same thing with the triangles that I did before. So I've brought in an edge brought it into here, and then back out to the other side. And I did this to avoid having to have any edge loops going down here where we would kind of hit this circle. So in doing that, we get a nice point here. So the next thing we want to do is move on to creating the dial that sits in the middle here. 
And I've already created that in another layer. As you can see, it's just a beveled cylinder with uh, the back filled in. And this is a 12-sided cylinder. Now we have to create the kind of rectangular hole in the middle of it. And for that, I've created this shape in another layer. So this is obviously just a plane rotated and positioned into place. And I've added some edges on this to make sure that it maintains its shape in subdivision surface mode, as you can see. Now we need to attach these two objects together. So I'm going to go to the cylinder and I'm going to delete the front face. Actually, let's inset that once before we do and then delete it. And I'm going to go grab our cube and chuck it into this layer. Now this has 12 faces surrounding it, so 12 edges, as does this. So we can just bridge the two together very, very simply. Now to create the inset, I'm going to select all of these middle polygons. I'm going to bevel them in once, then bevel them back back again and then one more time and that will create our square hole and it's just a case of going in and adding in some extra edges here to shore up the back we can inset the bottom once and then delete it and this object is now done as well so that's our entire grip object completed now we're going to move on to this section here. Now it doesn't use any techniques we haven't covered so far, so we're going to do another one of these amazing step-by-step -step transformation thingies that uh, I don't know if you guys are going to like, so you know, let me know. But uh, right at this end, I mean it's a very simple object, we're just going to be following um, basically the front reference there and the right reference in here as well, so it's nothing too complicated. But basically you create uh, the shape using a cube. You can then add in some uh, extra lines to show it up in subdivision surface mode. When that's done, you need to create the circles and these are the shapes of um, kind of these indents here. And these are both the same size, even though they look a little bit different on the reference image. So when you've created the circle for that, you basically cut it in half and extend this edge out to the left, which is what I've done here. I've also added in these edges with which I can merge these verts together. And I've done that on both of these, as you can see. The next step is simply filling in the gaps. So I've added some extra edges around the back here and basically bridged all of these polygons so that we get some nice quad flows in here. The next thing I did was to grab these and we want to kind of bevel them into the body slightly. So I added an extra edge where we want the limit of our inset to be. And then I deleted the polygons next to it. The next step is to grab these guys and basically bevel these down once to this line, shift click and again to the very bottom of this inset. And when that's done you can delete the inside polys and merge the verts and you end up with the shape. Now that that's done we basically need to go in and add in some support edges around the entire model. So again I've added these ones in the middle which are very important for keeping this nice and creased when we go to sub D mode. And with that done, the last step is just to add in some buttons. Simple cylinders, beveled, go crazy. But um, yeah, very simple shape, so hopefully you shouldn't have too much trouble creating that. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing with this object, which is perhaps even simpler really. It's just uh, kind of this big box in the background. We then got a box here with a bit beveled out of it. And then this is just another box with a slightly beveled corner. But just to quickly give you the run through, we're going to bring these guys back and take a look. So I created a box and then created two cuts just where I could see on the reference. So you can see here that we have a cut where the box uh, kind of splits off. And if I go to the right reference, you can see we've got this cut down here. Then when I did that, I basically deleted those polygons that covered the end. So just these four and hit backspace to get rid of them. I then used the thicken command on this guy, which is in the polygon menu. You can see it up here, thicken. And basically you right click and drag out the blue arrow and this gives some depth to all of your polygons. And once that was done, I went in and added some support edges so that everything worked in subdivision surface mode. Next, we moved on to this guy and it really is just a basic cube. And all I've done is made a cube and extended out this face and I slightly tapered that in there. And I've added in the support edges so that again, everything looks good in subdivision surface mode. We then moved on to this guy, and as you can see, another cube. We just made this guy at the back, then made two cuts around there, and extruded out these faces. Now with this done, I went in and basically beveled, if I go and hide everything else quickly, I beveled these edges, like so, and then add in cuts around there, just to shore that up. 
and I added another edge loop just there to make sure that everything held its uh, shape really well and then basically added in a ton of support edges. Now the main way I did this was by going around the back here and all the way around the bottom and I beveled in all of those faces and I also did the same on the inside here like that. You just bevel those in a little bit and this gives you an edge loop running all the way around this object and you can just go in and add them in the normal places kind of on either side of the corners and when you do that you end up with this guy and this as you can see looks pretty good so that is that guy covered now I thought we'd just quickly cover the strap mount section here and we're going to leave the actual uh, strap clip itself for the moment but I'm just going to quickly show you how I created this it's very very simple and hopefully you can see how I might do it already but just in case I've got the other steps here so I'm going to quickly look at these guys so you want to make a cylinder and then bevel in the side faces and kind of just bring them forwards a little bit and that's going to create the hole in a second after that I basically grabbed all of these back vertices and scale them down on the Z and then brought them all in line so we have a flat back to this section which gives us this shape here. Now with that done I basically created these edges going around the outside and to do that I grabbed these side polygons and just beveled them in and then obviously did that on the other side as well. We then created this hole running through the middle and that was very simple. You grab these guys, hit B for bevel and insert them once and then without deselecting, you can go to Polygon, Bridge, and right click, and that'll do the work for you. And that's already looking pretty good, so carry on down. I now added this line going around here, and I also deleted the back polygon, so I went in and got rid of those guys, then added an edge at 50%, like so. And then with it still selected, I went to a top view, activated the scale tool with an action center of automatic. I just scaled that out slightly on the z-axis and that gives us this curved front. Now when that was done uh, I went in, and, oh, next one, I went in and redirected some of these back edges. As you can see they're going into the corner now. Um, we've done this a couple times now but I just like to keep squares on the corner if I can. So I just added in a couple of edges coming around like this and back up to there and then another one there and then you can get rid of these diagonal edges like so. This gives us this square on the corner which just makes things a little bit easier to work with. Now when that was done, which was uh, this guy here, sorry, then I basically created the back mount which if we take a quick look at it is really just a box and I've just added in a couple of edges here to make sure that when we go to subdivision surface mode we get a nice curve on the corner. I've also added in some edges running around the side I've inset the back once and then deleted the polygon and then basically I've just rotated this all into shape to match the top reference. So if we take another quick look, we'll go in and look at these guys and you see that everything looks pretty good and then obviously we're going to copy this over to the other side as well. I've also quickly put together this viewfinder switch object. Now I don't have a step by step for this because it is uh, pretty simple. It's the same technique that we used on the winder. I basically created a cylinder and then extruded out these faces up and flattened them down to create this shape up here. It was then just a case of moving the existing edges into place to give us a square which I then beveled outwards. I did the same with the circle down here and beveled that out and then I extended the entire ring of edges back to create this object here. So in subdivision surface mode it's looking pretty good. Now it's a very small object this but uh, we want to put a fair amount of detail into it so you want these edges to be quite nice and tight. But um, yeah so that's the viewfinder object, pretty simple stuff and using a lot of the same techniques we've covered so far. I've also quickly put together this viewfinder switch object. Now I don't have a step by step for this because it is uh, pretty simple. It's the same technique that we used on the winder. I basically created a cylinder and then extruded out these faces up and flattened them down to create this shape up here. It was then just a case of moving the existing edges into place to give us a square which I then beveled outwards. I did the same with the circle down here and beveled that out and then I extended the entire ring of edges back to create this object here. So in subdivision surface mode it's looking pretty good. Now it's a very small object this but uh, we want to put a fair amount of detail into it so you want these edges to be quite nice and tight. 
But um, yeah, so that's the viewfinder object. Pretty simple stuff and using a lot of the same techniques we've covered so far. Now I just quickly wanted to uh, point out this back section here. Now we're going to create this using pretty much the same techniques as we used on this section, but it is in fact a lot easier. As you can see, I've just created this box and I've added in a couple of edges. If we go to the back quickly, you can see that on this edge here, I've added in two edge loops. I've done the same thing here on two edge loops and I've done the same thing on this part here. And if I go to a left view, you can see that this is where it starts to go into the back there. What I'm going to do then is basically grab this entire middle row of polygons, go to a left view, and I'm going to pull these forwards just a tiny little bit. I'm going to bring the entire thing back a tiny bit, then grab these bottom verts and move them back to match the reference. Now with that done, it's just a case of adding in edges to short up in subdivision surface mode, and then we can bevel in this face to give us this uh, inset here. Obviously just scale that into position, then bevel it in one more time, push it in slightly, and push it back. And then obviously we just have to join it up with the back, which should be fairly simple for you guys now. And with that done, the final thing we need to do would be to add in these circles. And you can see here that I've just created these six sided circles in another layer and integrating these into these flat panels at the side should be really no trouble for you guys now. You just need to add in the number of edges and link it up with quads then inset slightly to create the shape. And after that's done, this entire object will be complete. And you can see I've now fully integrated these into the model. I've also beveled them out slightly so that in subdivision surface mode we get this kind of screw section there. And I've also created the cannon sign that you can see on the back here, but that really is just a box with some uh, loop slicing going on, so that's nothing too hard on that guy. So now the time has come for us to move on to the lens. Now we're going to take a quick look at how we intend to build the lens, but first of all, let's have a look at what exactly we've put together thus far. I mean, if you've come this far and kind of, uh, you know, followed along this entire way, you should be pretty happy with yourself, because I mean, this is a fairly complicated model. We've had to deal with several issues along the way. The lens, by all accounts, is actually not one of the most complicated parts of the model. It is just basically a cylinder, um, so you should really have not a lot of trouble creating this. If we take a look, we've got this main cylinder shape here, and we've got this smaller cylinder that sits inside of it. So what we're going to do is build this big cylinder here, and then cut it up into these little rings, and then we're going to deal with each ring separately. Now there are only about three or four different parts of this element which is going to give us you know, any form of modelling trouble whatsoever. We have this ring here with all of these ridges, although that is a fairly simple thing to achieve. We've got this ring here with the grip on it, and this is probably going to be one of maybe two parts that we're not going to use subdivision surfaces for. We're going to go back to regular poly modelling for that one. And we've got this section here, uh, which is the screw thread where you attach uh, filters onto and things like that. And then finally we've got the cap. So let's get going. So as you can see, I've created this lens template object, and I did that using the circle we saved earlier. I basically copied this into a new layer and then I scaled it in ever so slightly using this front reference um, view. And then in the side view, I moved it into position and then extruded it out along the length of this outer cylinder. With that done, I went ahead and added in some loop slices, which mark the extents of all of the different rings and also adds in this slight slope at the end. And to do that, I just grabbed this face and slightly scaled in. So with that done, I'm gonna go into a front view I'm going to bevel in this front face one more time to create this row of polygons running around here. And with that done, I'm going to bevel one final time and push back slightly. Now for the moment, I'm going to cut this face into a new layer. I'm going to hide that layer and move back to our lens template. Now what we need to do is split this up into these separate ring objects. So I'm going to select these polys and hit loop, and these polys and hit loop as well. Then I'm going to cut and paste them back into the same layer. And this just splits up our rings into separate objects. So if I go to a side view, you can see we have this ring here. Then we have this ring. Then we have this one with the ridges. Then we have a small one there. And then this entire object at the end is, uh, is a single object, basically. So what we're going to do is go ahead and work on each ring one at a time and add in any details that are needed. 
Okay, first of all, we're going to deal with these back two rings. Now, there's a slight step down from this ring into this one, and then back up to this one. So we're going to deal with that first. I'm just going to grab both of these edges in here and move them slightly to the left. They're a little bit off there. Actually, let's move them to there, I think. Then what I'm going to do is grab this edge, and with our mode set to symmetry and a count of two, I'm just going to grab these out a little bit, like so. I'm going to grab this entire loop and scale it down slightly using the cross in the middle of the scale tool. When we do that, we just want it to be a little bit, and this creates a slight drop down into this ring here. Now with that done, we can go back to our right view and take a look at what we have to build. Now we have this little uh, kind of semicircle here, or semi-sphere here, and I've done that just basically with a sphere object. So yeah, I've positioned that into place and rotated it so it aligns with this curve here. And then I've just uh, basically cut it in half. With that done, back in the right view, you can see that we have this object here. And this has a little silver button that's sticking out of it. So we're going to build that now in a new mesh layer. I'm going to go to a front view and we're going to select the basic tab and the pen tool. And I'm going to come down and draw this using the pen tool. So I'm going to click on this foot here. And then I'm going to click roughly there, where this shape basically hits this black line. With that done, I'm going to click there at the top of this point, and then add one more point at the top of this other side of this object. Now with that done, I'm going to draw an edge across the middle with a count of one and a loop slice mode of three. So I'm going to cut an edge about halfway, like so. And then going to add another edge and this is going to be with a count of two and a mode of symmetry. I'm going to do one there. So we're adding this vertice at the top of this section. And then I'm going to basically get this edge and slide it along so that this edge here matches that part of the ref. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to slide that along into position. And then we can delete this polygon here. And we've created the basic shape of this object. So I'm going to go back to a side view and move it into position, like so. And then it's just a case of extruding it along to create the depth, going into perspective mode, and then we need to shore this up with some extra edges. Now once that's done, what we can do is basically bevel this edge back slightly to make sure that it's covered up by the entirety of the lens. And then I'm gonna hit delete to get rid of these faces. So I'm gonna go in and shore up those edges quickly, and then I'll come back. Now, as you can see, I've added in those extra end loops running all the way around the model, and this makes sure that we keep our shape in subdivision surface mode. Now, all I'm going to do is grab this middle poly and bevel it in slightly, and then go to a right view just to make sure that we match this. And that's actually pretty close. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to shift click and bevel it in one more. Shift click and bevel it back one. Bevel back again ever so slightly. In once. And then out. And then I'm going to do out one more time and in slightly. And this will just create this button. Now at the moment, obviously it's circular. We actually want this to be square. So we have to go in and add yet more loop slices. But with that done, we should have a nice square button on the side of our lens. So I'm going to cut this into our lens object. I'm going to cut our sphere into that object as well. And then I can basically make this section and this section into our kind of uh, subdivision surface to see that everything works. Now at present we have this back face on here which I'm going to delete. We also need to shore up these edges in here. So what I'm going to do is grab this and take it out of subdivision surface mode. And then going to grab polygons from both of these rings and double click. Then I'm going to hit shift H to hide everything else. Now I'm just going to add an extra edge just in there. Now remember we've got our count of two at the moment, so I'm going to take that off. Just want one edge just in there like that. I'm going to go in and delete that loop of polygons. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to grab all of these edges, that one and this guy as one. Well. I'm going to hit extend. I'm just going to scale these in using the blue circle. I'm just going to scale them in ever so slightly, so nothing too much. And this just gives a little bit of depth to our rings here. Now what I'm going to do is grab this edge and this edge, and we're going to bevel them slightly with a round level of zero. I'm going to do the same thing for this edge and this edge, like so. 
Now we're gonna go in and add a few more edges just to shore this up when we go into subdivision surface mode. So you wanna make sure you get both of the inside edges here. Add those in place, like so. I think that one got added a little bit low down, so I'm gonna bring that one back out. Grab it, there you go. I'm gonna delete that one and add that one in again. So just inside there, it's a little bit fiddly stuff, this, but there's nothing to worry about, basically. We're gonna do the same thing along here, like so. And then we need to do the same thing to these guys. So I'm gonna select one, give us a count of two and a mode of symmetry. I'm gonna do it there and on both of these edges as well. With that done, if I take these into subdivision surface mode, we keep a very nice crisp edge, but they are definitely separate objects. So we're gonna get a nice bit of shadow in there. So I'm going to hit U for unhide, and we can now see how these objects are working together. So we have this red dot, we have this button here, which is the lens release catch, and then we have these two first rings, and that's looking really good. Okay, we're now going to move on and create this ring here. Now, doing this with the amount of polys that we have uh, clearly would, you know, mean doing it with a displacement map or with a bump map or something like that. But I think it's it's a uh, most more prominent enough detail to uh, warrant doing it not in subdivision service mode. So I'm going to go to perspective mode and I'm going to hit D on my keyboard, and this basically subdivides the mesh. So I'm going to hit D again and again. And this gives us a whole bunch more polys to work with. Now we don't actually need these edges, so I'm going to select those guys and hit L to loop, and then hit backspace to get rid of them. Now with that done, I'm going to go into a right view, and I'm going to select this polygon. Actually, no, let's select this guy, and then this guy. So we're selecting the raised polygons. So select a few, so one, then miss one, one, then miss one. And then what we can do is go to a top view, and if we hold down the up key, Modo will continue that selection pattern for us. So you just hold this down until we get to the very top, like that. And with that done, we just need to go in and select the rest of these guys as well. So remember to hold down Shift to add to selection. So with all of these guys selected, I'm going to hit B for bevel and right click. I'm then going to pull them out ever so slightly like so, maybe a tiny little bit more. And then we're gonna activate the scale tool and scale them in on the z-axis just a little bit, like so. So we now have that shape looking pretty good. The next thing we need to create is this little button that sits on top of this part of the ring. And to do that, I'm first of all gonna create a bulge for it to sit in, which you can just about see on the references here. So I'm gonna select the four polygons that cover it and then two on either side. I'm going to come up to Fall Off and click Cylinder, and I'm going to click and drag in the middle of that button out to one extra polygon either side of our selection, and then just pull down to create a circular shape. Now with that in position, I can select the Scale tool, and I'm going to scale it out slightly on the Z-axis. You notice this just creates a very slight bulge on either side of it. Now with that done, I'm going to hit Space to drop the tool and turn off our Fall Off. Now we're going to use the stencil tool again over in the mesh edit tab down here under the solid drill command to create a perfect circle on these polygons but we're not looking directly straight parallel with these polygons you can see they're slightly off to the side so we're going to take uh, into account modo's work plane functions and with these polygons selected i'm going to go to work plane assign work plane to selection and if i click this nothing happens but if we go to a top view you see our top view camera is now perfectly aligned with these polygons. So the model itself hasn't changed, it's just Modo's top, left, right, front, you know, orthographic cameras have altered and moved slightly to rotate so we can see these polygons perfectly. So with these in position, first thing I'm going to do is bevel these in ever so slightly, like so. And then I'm going to add an extra edge running right down the center of our ring, like that. And with that done, we can go into another layer I'm going to create a cylinder. So I'm going to click right in the middle and drag us out a nice size cylinder, making sure that the radiuses are both the same. Now we're not using subdivision surfaces for this, so we want the sides to be you know, quite a good amount, so I'm going to put those up to 32. And with that done, I'm going to go to perspective mode and draw out a little bit of height on that cylinder, like so. 
Now you can see at the moment we have two segments, we only want one, so I'm going to change that down over in the properties section. And then when we're happy, space to drop the tool. I can now change our work plane back by clicking work plane, reset work plane. Now our top view will look exactly as we expect. So you can see I need to slightly move this back on this axis like so. With that done, I can go ahead and start using the stencil tool. As you can see, I've put our rings in the foreground and our stencil object in the background. And then I'm going to come up to the Mesh Edit tab and click on Solid Drill. And with our operation set to Stencil, I'm going to click OK. And you can see if I hide this mesh, that our circle has now stenciled itself onto our rings object. So what I'm going to do is before I do anything else, I'm going to come up to Vertex and click Merge. Because after you do a Boolean operation, it's always good to do some cleanup. And you can see we have 37 vertices merged. Now I'm going to come to Shaded and turn on our vertices. Now it's just a case of going in and converting this all to quads. Now in a couple of places we can merge some verts, in a couple of places we might have to draw some edges. But I'm going to go around this entire object in order to convert this to quads and then bevel to create our button. So as you can see, I've converted these mainly into tries, actually. It's one of those situations where there's not a whole bunch you can do about that. Then I inset the inserted polygons and added a nice bevel to this edge and this edge, and then, of course, merged to a single vert in the middle. And now this second ring is completely done, apart from one last thing. If I double-click it and click Shift-H, we just want to add some depth to these sides in here. So I'm going to click Z to edge extend, right-click, and then we're going to scale these in using the blue handle just a little bit. Now I'm going to grab this edge and see whether or not we can bevel, and it doesn't look like we can. So what your next task to do is, viewers, is to go in and basically bevel all of these hard edges, and it is not a fun thing to go and do. Now Modo makes uh, it a little bit easier in a couple of places. For instance, these edges are going to need beveling. So what we could do is select two and then hit the up arrow to continue the selection, and Modo will continue doing that. Then you can always hold shift, click two more, and tap the up arrow again, and Modo will select the rest for you. But essentially, all of these hard edges need to be beveled. We don't want to add in bevels on these guys because it will really up the poly count. So not a fun thing to do, but a necessary step, sadly. So uh, good luck. I'm going to move on to the next ring object. OK, so the next thing I'm going to do is grab this loop here. I'm going to cut and paste that back in, because we're going to work on this a little bit separately. So quickly, I'm just going to select it and click Shift-H to hide everything else. I'm then going to ever so slightly just pull these in using the Edge Extend tool, like on the other guys. And then going to select both of these edges and bevel them once. And then add in two slices along the top with our Symmetry tool like so and that will be that ring done and then we can move on to the next one now you see that i've uh, basically created another layer where i'm keeping all the bits of lens that are complete and this just makes things a little bit easier to work with now this next ring is also going to be using regular polygons now before we uh, subdivide it i'm going to select this loop and then hit shift up arrow to expand my selection twice to this loop here and then hit delete to get rid of them and then going to select both of these edges and delete those guys as well. Now I'm going to hit D twice on my keyboard, which will give us this selection here. And I can get rid of these edges because we're going to draw those back in right now. So back in a left view, I'm going to slice in one edge just there like that, and slice in another edge there. And you can go in and tweak these with the Move tool if needs be. And then I'm going to select one of these edges in the center, and Alt-C for the loop slice, set our count to 3, and hit space to drop the tool. And we want to select all of these squares in here, so I'm going to... Yeah, oh, that was useful. But uh, if you didn't have that selected, when you hit polygon mode, you can go in and drag select and hit L, hold down shift, drag select and hit L, and then hold down shift and tap up to expand once. Now with all of these selected, I'm going to hit B on my keyboard for bevel, and making sure that group polygons is turned off, I'm going to right click to activate, and inset ever so slightly, just a really small amount. I'm also going to pull out just a very tiny amount like that. I'm going to shift click, pull out a little bit further, and inset a little bit further. Actually, that's a little bit too far, so pull that back in. 
And then we're going to do one more time. So I'm going to inset a little tiny bit and pull out just a tiny little bit. And this creates these little beveled cubes. And this is our grip. Now obviously we've got a bit of a smoothing error going on here, so I'm going to select this edge. On the count of one, I'm just going to drag an edge close in like that. Do the same on the other side. And we're going to grab this back edge, and we're going to extend that in to create some depth. So remember to use the blue circle on the scale tool. And then select this back edge, and we're going to bevel it with a round level of zero. And with that done, we can recreate the front. So I'm going to select this front ring, go to a left view, and I'm going to extend it slightly out to the left. And then I'm going to scale it in to create this drop here. So using the cross in the middle of the scale tool, like so. Then in the front view, I'm going to extend it one more time, then activate the scale tool and use the blue circle to pull this in to create that ring of polygons just up there. And with that done, we can extend one last time and pull them back, like so. And we just want to go in and bevel these front edges. So select these three. Select oh, keyboard troubles. Select that guy, that guy, and that guy, and hit L to loop. And we just want to bevel these with a keyboard is going crazy. Loop and then bevel these with a round level of zero, like so. So that's the very front of this lens object done. So I'm going to cut this into our lens complete layer. We can take a look at what we've got. So so far, so good. So as you can see, I've used the polygon we saved in another layer a minute ago to create a rough approximation of the rest of the lens. So I'm going to hide our completed segments quickly and take a look at what I've got. So I basically just beveled it out to create this section here. Now I've gone in and shored up these back edges and this edge here. I'm going to make a cut halfway down this point. And I'm going to bevel in this entire loop of polygons. And what this will do, making sure you have group connected turned on, I'm going to push these back just to create a little bit of a gap between these two segments. Now I can delete this extra edge here, and I'm going to bevel this edge loop just on this corner, and then add in an extra edge there and there just to shore up that section. Now with that done, we need to go ahead and add in this kind of loop that runs around this section. You can see in the left view as well we have this kind of extra kind of extrusion that runs around it. And what I've done is created this in another layer. And I've basically taken these polygons, cut them into another layer and hit D to subdivide. And then I've beveled them out to create this rough shape here. So it's kind of like a mound basically. And when you've done that, what you want to do is go ahead and create these extra bevels here. And there's also one that runs around the entire bottom. And when you've done that, it should look a little bit like this. Now what I've done is just grab these polygons at the top and bevel them up so it's nothing too fancy. But what you could do is come in and grab um, these polygons at the end and we can just scale these in slightly to uh, closely match the reference image. Now with that done I've also added in the next ring along which is this guy and as you can see that is just a plain old ring with some extra edges uh, to keep its shape in subdivision surface mode so there's nothing too fancy in that section. And the next thing I've done is to add in a set of polygons that you can see here that mimic the very start of our lens cap. And what we're going to do is hit D once to subdivide and I'm going to get rid of this edge running down the middle. And I'm going to grab this end edge and in a left view I'm going to extend it out to there and scale it in so we get that nice kind of uh, slope there. I'm going to extend it out one more time, then go to a front view, and I'm going to extend it in and use the scale tool to create this row of polygons running around. I'm going to extend in one more time and scale in just past this black circle here. Then I'm going to extend one more time and scale in a little bit further. And with the vertex mode, I'm going to go to join averaged. And what we can do is grab this loop of polygons here. Hit L to select the entire thing and then bevel these back into the object like so. We're now going to go in and create these holes on the side of the lens cap object. So I'm just going to rotate it if necessary into position. And when you're happy, you can select these polygons and these guys as well. In fact, I'm just going to work on one side for the moment. So I'm going to grab all of these guys 
and get these guys as well. And see, I've just put these extra two loops on this back side. When you've done that, I'm going to copy those into a new mesh and hide that layer. Now it's just a case of bridging these two polys and like that. And then we can grab this guy in here and these guys here and bridge these as well. So that's pretty cool. And then in our new layer with the polys that we left behind, I'm going to delete everything apart from this middle row, like so. I'm going to grab these edges. I'm just going to put this all in our background for reference. I'm just going to bring these up slightly. And what we can do is basically bevel these in like that. And we are going to have to flip this in a second, but that's no problem. So I'm going to double click everything and hit flip. Then I'm going to select this entire edge loop and deselect the two ends and click bridge like that. Then I can go into a right view and make sure we're positioning this correctly. So it just needs to be a bit thicker like so. Then it's just a case of going in and adding in these holes, which is fairly simple stuff. You guys should be uh, pretty proficient at this by now, I think. Just add in some edge loops and then select these holes like so. And then you can just delete the polys on either side. Or a good technique to use actually would be to select three and just bridge them like so. Then you want to repeat this on the other side. And our lens cap will be pretty much complete. So the final thing we want to do to our lens cap is just grab these four inner polygons, and this is at the uh, back of the lens cap, like so. I'm just going to bevel these in slightly, I'm going to inset them, then shift click and just bevel them so they meet the inside of the lens cap. And then we can just delete these polys at either end. Now what we want to do is paste these into the same layer. And we can go in and start beveling some edges. So you just want to select all of these guys and apply a slight bevel. And we'll do this all the way around. Now, I'm not going to cover the creation of the Canon logo in this tutorial, as I've done that previously in my boss tutorial. And it basically uses Modo's curve system, but I'll give up a link to a Canon EPS file, as well as a link to the tutorial where I cover how you would go about creating a logo like this. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. That's it for another time. Um, it's certainly been a complex object, so if you've gotten this far, you know, give yourself a pat on the back because it's not easy doing these uh, product modeling shots, especially not in subdivision services. But I hope the Modo made it nice and fun for you and you haven't had too many problems. Now, if I covered things a little bit quickly in places, uh, just drop me a line in the forms below and I'll be happy to try and get you, um, you know, any advice that I can give or maybe record another short video or something like that. But hopefully in the future, we'll be uh, UVing and texturing this object and then maybe rigging it as well. And we'll look into the complexities of the lens when we do that. Now, uh, as I said, leave me some comments below. Let me know what you think of all this. And uh, if you want to speak to me on Twitter, I'm at Bad Granola. That's B-A-D-G-R-E-N-O-L-A. -E and you can, you know, talk to me on there about whatever you want. Ask me some questions. Tell me how bad my tutorials are or, you know, whatever you fancy, basically. But, uh, yeah, until next time, guys, have a good one. Cheers.